Welcome to Inside Boxing Throwdown. My name is Steve Johnson. My radio, radio Martinez. Martinez. We're going to talk this uh, this segment. We're going to talk about uh, the, uh, the the exciting fight card on HBO, mm -hmm. uh, promoted by Top Rank, October the thirteenth, Saturday. Where we're going to have Denver's own Mahai Mike Alvarado take on, I should say, Kansas's own um, <laughs> um, um, Brandon Bam Bam Rios. You know, for a junior uh, welterweight belt there. And then uh, in the main event of that fight card, we're going to have Nonito Donaire taking on uh, Toshiaki Nishioka for the IBF and the WBO uh, junior featherweight titles. Going to be a very good show. Stay tuned, stay tuned and we'll be right back to give uh, you all our information. Be back in a minute. Welcome back to Inside Boxing Throwdown. We got a good show for them today, Steve. Yes, we and do. Like we said at the beginning, we got this uh, uh, this uh, this show that a top rank is putting together. You know, we're used to watching shows that uh, um, more than so, you know, the outcome of the fight. Uh, you got uh, a, an exceptional fighter fighting an average fighter or or a good fighter. Uh, but in this case, we have a couple of fights uh, that are coming on uh, this card that are just going to be fantastic, or they should be fantastic, uh, and, no, let me tell you, and it's for I, free. Well, well not, not for not free, but free. It's, a, yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. HBO, it's HBO, but like you said, it's not pay-per-view. It's not pay-per-view. Um, I don't think there's any question. I think this fight, is, this fight card is going to be awesome. It's one, that, one of the few times that you'll hear both of us, along with most other, um, I'll say knowledgeable sports fans, will agree that this is a fight that you don't, a fight card you don't want to miss. Nonito Donaire. Um, um, against uh, Toshiaka uh, Nishioka. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Nishioka hasn't lost a fight in eight years. You know, this guy is, he's the real deal, though. I mean, uh, mo most American <clears throat> fans aren't familiar with him because he's from Japan, and most right. of his fights are in Europe. Right. But this guy is the real deal. When you, you just figure that a guy is a world champion, a former world champion anyway, moving up in weight, and you figure that he hasn't lost a fight in eight years, he's got to be taken seriously. He's not a bum. No, he's not a bum. As a matter of fact, I think that uh, he's going to give Nonito Donaire uh, a, a, a quite a battle. And uh, don't be surprised. I don't think anyone should be surprised if he comes out winning this fight. I think the only thing he's got against him is, of course, he, he's, all his fights have been back in his uh, homeland. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it's a bit different uh, story when you come in to the big stage and, in, you know, under, under the HBO lights and... Uh, here in the United States, things kind of change a little bit, but still, take that away. The guy has credentials. Uh, uh, how long has it been since he's lost? I mean, eight years. Eight years. I mean, this guy's not coming in just to uh, uh, get a payday. He's actually coming in, and he uh, <clears throat> is planning to keep his streak together and kind of going to show something. Okay. I like I said, he's not a bum, you know. In his eight years that he hasn't lost, that's that that includes eight world title fights. <laughs> so the guy's not. Uh, but, but I'll tell you this: um, you said you won't be surprised if uh, Nishioka wins. No, I, I, I won't be, be surprised. At I would be surprised. surprised. I would be surprised. Just for this, I'm I'm going to tell you, and I know that you'll remember this, and hopefully it'll um, calm you down a little bit about Nishioka. Um, remember Nanito Donaire for all that you know the issues that he's had with his contract issues with Bob Arum and Top Rank, you know, where he was shelled for a little while, mm -hmm. thanks to his wife, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, he's still got his victories, you know, against Vic Darchinian, Fernando Montiel, and don't forget, Wilfredo Vasquez Jr. And that, that leads right into my point, guys. I think, I, I think that Nonito Donaire, uh, and the reason I won't be surprised, Steve, is simply because you're, when you talked about Darchinian and, and the others, that was a bantamweight. Okay, True. now he's up to 122, and don't forget he won a split decision uh, over Wilfredo uh, Vasquez, Vasquez Jr. Jr. and uh, uh, tough fight, but it goes to show that when you move up in weight and you start fighting uh, the heavier uh, 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 contenders out there, mm -hmm. uh, it's a different world, and I think he's having problems. His last fight, of course, he did his best and he tried his best to knock out. Um, Jeffrey Mathabula. Yes. And, and well, that was for the IBF title, but, but I still, the, the problems he's having in that weight class uh, is, is going to good effect. He's not the same fighter that he was at Bantamweight. Uh, he's still world class. He's still the best we could get out there. 
but this is going to be a test on whether he's going to be able out there. He can't go out there and, and, and try to wail and, and just knock out uh, his opponent on this case, I think, because if he does that, I think he'll be in for a surprise. And you put uh, him in uh, his trainer, Roberto Garcia, and I don't think that's going to happen. I think they're going to come in with a, with a good strategy uh, a, 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 to go in, a game plan that they're going to execute. But then again, they're fighting someone that's on top of the totem pole. I mean, it's, 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 it's not going to be an easy fight. No, my, my, but I'm going to disagree with you on, on that. Where, mm -hmm. um, I will say that that fight, that last fight he had in July, um, where they unified the, the, the mm -hmm. belt with Jeffrey Mathabula, I watched the fight just like you did a radio, and I thought that Nonito Donaire was so obsessed with knocking this guy out yes. that you know he put himself behind the eight ball. You know, anytime a boxer allows himself to feel that, that exterior pressure where he feels he has to put on this type of a performance... He puts himself behind the eight ball. And like I said, when you compound all the other issues that, that we know that Nonito had to deal with, you know, um, um, getting back in the ring, getting, I mean, just, you know, coming to a sentence, right. his sentence with Bob Merriman top rank and moving forward. He was basically a year behind. I mean, you know, right. technically, sure. you know, he, he sure. lost a year in getting that up. And I just think he's back on target. I think he's back on target. But like I said, Nishioka is not a bum. <laughs> yeah. You know. Are you talking about losing that year? You know, all in all, <clears throat> wasn't a bad thing because he 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 kind of missed out on a year. But if you remember, that was the year where Manny Pacquiao was on top of the world. That that's all people wanted to talk about was the Filipino from uh, uh, from the Philippines. Uh, from the Philippines, Manny Pacquiao. That was it. Uh, Donito was uh, second base and a distant, distant second base. I mean, uh, so uh, with that all gone. Um, no matter what people think out there, the fire in Manny Pacquiao is simmering, regardless. I mean, he still talked about it, but you can feel it. Mm -hmm. the, the times are changed. It's not summertime for him anymore. It's mm -hmm. autumn, and we're getting into the winter where it's mm -hmm. cool enough. Where I think Manny Pacquiao is, and Floyd Mayweather, for that purpose, they're going down. So right now, I think that's... that's And the only people you still have talking about that fight are, are your hardcore, your writers out there that want to get readership or something. Well, like, but that whole know. thing is gone. But Nonito, going back to Nonito, he's he's actually... That, that year didn't hurt him as much as it probably helped him because now... It's his turn to become on the limelight, and um, all he's got to do is go out and win. <laughs> I think he's going to continue that. I don't, I don't. But like you said, that's that's the main event. Well, the Kobe event. But that'll be the last fight that you'll see on October the thirteenth on HBO, uh, ten p.m. p.m. Eastern time, for all of you uh, Mountain Fit Standard Time folks like we are here at Radio. Yes. That'll be eight p.m. and you don't want to miss it. Just as as attractive as that fight will be, will be this co-main event <laughs> where we have Denver's own Maha Mike Alvarado taking on Brandon Bam Bam Rios. You know, I'm I'm kind of amazed uh, because this this actually rightfully can be the main event. Exactly. Okay. Uh, the difference between this fight and the Donaire fight is, I think, in this fight, you have a couple of Mexican kids that are. Demanding to prove a point, they are they are actually both undefeated. Okay, they both feel they're on top of their game right now. Mm -hmm. They both feel they're the heavier hitter of each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not going to be like we're going to see any dancing and schooling in there. We're 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 going to see these guys go in there and and go at it. I mean, uh, let's talk about that fight. Let's, <laughs> let's let's talk about how we think this fight may turn out because realistically. Uh, this is not an easy fight to pick. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> this is one of those fights where um, I actually could talk to you and I could say, I see Brandon Rios win this fight. I could come back to the other seat and say, I see Mike Alvarado, and I make an excellent point. Make some, make an, I can make an excellent case for either fighter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, really, I'm going to go out right off the bat and I'm going to tell you. Um, and I think everyone will realize that too. There's no better fan of in in the junior welterweight division of me than than, than my boy Breeders Prescott. That's right. Before you're, Breeders Prescott you've been fought his man, you drove you drive the bus. Thank you. Okay. And, and, and before Breeders Prescott fought Mike, I had to think about it. 
and I weighed my allegiance to my hometown boy against the guy who I know is tough. And I just felt that Mike Alvarado was going to get it done. Yes. And Mike, Ar Mike Alvarado got it done. Not only did he get it done, he had to dig deep to get it done. Very deep. Okay. Very deep. As a matter of fact, that, that's my point is, is before that fight, you know, Mike has been fighting good fighters, uh, but given so the good fighters that some of them were past their prime, they were, they were, they were in a position where they were ready to be taken. Yeah. Okay. Good names ready to be taken, and he's passed all them tests. He passed all the tests, but, but still, before the Breedis fight, the question was there as far as Mike and can he take a punch? Yes. Can he? Can he take? Does he have a chin? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Anyone that 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 had a question about that, that question was answered in that Breedis uh, uh, fight because if anyone, all y'all that saw that fight, uh, Mike got hit with some pretty solid punches. Okay. Well, let's go beyond that. <laughs> Mike Mike Alvarado was in the position where he had to have the knockout to win that fight. That's yep. that's just my own yep. opinion. I think he had to have the knockout to win. I think he was behind. Um, you know, I mean, British Prescott had clearly won the first six rounds, and so that meant that Mike was going to have to come on strong and get the knockout in order to win. And not only did he come on strong and, and win, but impressive. I mean, uh, impressive. You know, you know what I like. What I like when you're talking about that whole scenario there is, is, it would have been very easy for Mike, because because of the way the fight was going in the early stages. Okay, to uh, with the cut lip, the last rate, it was actually the, the lip was separated. Okay, it would have been very easy for him to go to his corner and say, hey, the lip's last rate, it's cut, I'm swallowing blood, uh, can't go on anymore. Yeah. Okay? And, and nobody would have blamed him. I mean, it was that kind of fight, and he wouldn't have been looked at, uh, he wouldn't have been looked down at, because everyone who saw that fight knew that that was... There was nothing wrong with that. That was that was actually what most fighters would have done, but not Mike. Mike Mike actually showed, hey, this is this is this is a fight. This is what this is my career. This is what I do for a living. And he went in and he stuck it out. And I'll tell you what, end of the fight, boy, he had breeders like a Wrigley Spearmint gum, boy. <laughs> it, was, it was it was it was good. And uh, any boxing fan out there could be proud of Mike for that fight. It was. Well, just I don't know about fights. the Wrigley Spearmint. We're not. We don't have sponsorship for them, so I don't appreciate you mentioning the experiment. But anyway, no, um, no, Mike Alvarado, like I said, uh, that performance he put against uh, uh, where he dug deep against British Prescott. Um, I'm I'm just a firm believer that at 32 years old, Mike uh, understands and 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 feels like you know now's his time. And then to follow that British Prescott fight up a radio with the fight against Mauricio Herrera, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and where Mike, once again, that fight, you know, was still a candidate for fight of the year. Well, I'm telling you what, Herrera, Herrera, again, no slouch. No bum. Herrera came in uh, on a mission. Yes. You know, it was up to Mike to break that mission. And uh, again, Mike uh, stepped up and, and accomplished what he was supposed to accomplish. Now, so. you know what? I'm going to hold your feet to the fire a little bit. Because fans, you got to hear this when we right. talked about Nonito Donaire. You said moving up from bantamweight to 122, and that's where you feel like there might be a little bit of a. Now that he's really at at the top of the list here against uh, uh, um, uh, Noshiaka. Okay. No, against Noshiaka. Yeah. That you know, and but you say you know Nonito moving up. So here we got Brandon moving up to yes. Mike Alvarado, who has been at Junior Welter forever. So. Yes. I want you to just think about that because you said you can you can see you wouldn't be surprised if if uh, Nashioka won. Right. Okay. Right. Now, so now you got to turn that around and you you got to say I won't be surprised if Mike Alvarado wins. I'm holding well, your feet to the fire on this. Well, 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 that's that's true. I wouldn't be surprised if Mike wins because Mike has the advantages going into this fight because number one, he's fighting at his, at his weight. This is this is his. This is his weight. This is what Mike fights at. Mm -hmm. Brandon Rios is moving up to this weight. Yes. Okay, so Brandon Rios is moving up to this weight. So uh, as far as being at a natural weight in the ring, uh, that advantage goes to Mike. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we know Mike can take a hit. I think the questions are, when we talk about Brandon Rios, Brandon Rios, again, is a hell of a fighter. Mm 
-hmm. He's a hell of a warrior, and you can never take that back uh, away from him. Mm -hmm. This guy comes to fight. He he's proven himself in the ring. Mm -hmm. He's proven himself. Uh, even though Brandon is moving up in weight, okay. We understand in his last two fights, he's had problems making. Weight. He's had problems making weight. So it's not like it's not like he's going to have to struggle or or whatever you want to call it to move up in the weight. I got he's you. actually moving up into a more comfortable, comfortable weight. I got you. To where it's it. So even though Mike, you can say, okay, Mike's advantage because that's Mike's weight. Uh, it is an advantage, but when you look at Brandon Rio's situation, uh, it's not so much as at of an advantage as people can say it is because yeah. Brandon Rio's has had a lot of difficulty. Um, we got one thirty-five. They got one thirty-five, and I'm gonna tell you what: if you look at his frame, he's He's thin framed, even at 140. He's thin framed, so in the future, you see welterweight for him. I see him welterweight. I mean, because he's 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 thin. He's got that Alexis Aguayo type uh, uh, figure. So I don't think the 140 is going to be a problem. I think it's going to be a, a more comfortable zone. Uh, well, let me let me stop you right there. I'm going to agree with you that the weight is not going to be a problem. The problem is going to be Mike Alvarado, okay? Because Mike Alvarado. Now, just think about this. The fight he had against Prescott, he's looking up. The fight against Misra Herrera, he's, you know, he's a little bit short. Now, he's looking down. You know, just by a little bit, but, he's, much, looking, yeah. but, but he's looking down at Brandon Rios. I see him putting it on Brandon Rios. You know, they're both heavy hitters. They both have power, okay? We know Mike has power. Mm -hmm. okay? We know Mike has power, and we know Brandon has power at 135. Thank you. The question is... Is that yeah. power going to carry on into 140? Into the 140 weight. See, that's a question we have to we have to uh, to look at. The second question is, we know Mike can take a punch. Okay, we know Mike can take a punch. Mm -hmm. We didn't know that before. Mm -hmm. Can Brandon Rios take a punch from a junior welter at 140? There you go. See, there were two questions that have to be answered. Uh, personally, personally, I'm going to say yes to both of them. I think. I think Brandon Rios can take a punch. I think he's he's mentally his his head is is there where uh, there's not going to be any quitting in Brandon Rios. There's not going to yeah. be any quitting in either one of these fighters. No they, way. Both, both of these fighters. This fight has been talked about before and it's been talked about. It just hasn't been done. Right. So now it's actually signed and delivered, and uh, we're gonna we're actually going to see this. So I look for an outstanding fight. I'll tell you what. If Brandon Rios has an advantage, we talked about the advantages for, for Mike and, and his comfortable weight class, and, and uh, we know he can take a, take a punch, so uh, can Brandon Rios hurt him uh, enough to uh, take Mike out of his game plan? Okay, we know that Mike can take that punch, okay? Well, let's talk about any advantages that Brandon Rios may have in this game. Well, number one, as far as ring generalship, in the ring, I think you probably have to give that edge to, to Brandon Rios as far as being a little more elusive and being a little bit more where you're not going to take the solid punch. I would, I, it's my opinion, I would personally give that edge to Brandon Rios. But the big edge, the very big edge that I'm going to give to Brandon Rios is coaching. He's got probably the best coach in uh, Roberto Garcia in boxing today okay and that's saying that's a big statement because you got the freddie roaches you got the floyd mayweathers you got all these so but what i'm saying the, the people acknowledge them as top of the line as far as uh coaches you, you got roger, Emmanuel. roger mayweather you said floyd but freddie roach floyd roger. senior floyd senior freddie roach floyd senior and roger yep and, uh you ask floyd who's the best coach in the world uh, floyd made uh, the senior the father He'll tell you. He's not ashamed to tell you. He's the best coach. He'll say it's him. <laughs> but anyway, you got them. You got Emmanuel Stewart. Okay. You've got all these coaches that are on top. So when I say Roberto Garcia out there is the best coach in boxing today, that's saying a lot. And I mean that. I'm not just saying that to say it. I honestly mean that. I mean, when you put, he comes from a boxing family. His father, him, his brothers, his 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 younger brother Mickey. Is, is having an outstanding beginning to his career. 
And it all stems from coaching and strategies. So I think that's a big, that's a major advantage going into this fight. Where if you look at Mike, um, can you tell me who his coach is? Uh, Jake Reynolds. Nope. Um, who's his coach? Yeah, his trainer. His trainer? Who's his trainer? See, that's what everybody else out there is looking, is asking. No one knows Mike's uh, 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 team. His, oh, his, his Jake team. Ramos is Manny Perez, our, yes, our guest uh, that we uh, have on. His, his team. Okay. okay um, his coach is, uh, his coach is uh, Sean Vilhauer. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I know Sean personally, and he works hard. He works hard is what he does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, he's unknown, so this is kind of his step to go out there to see how he's going to put together for a strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he has, he himself as a coach has, has, have, have had to learn something from the Breedis, the Marcinia, all the good fighters that, that Mike has, has, has won. Okay, mm -hmm. so you put, you put uh, his coach and then his manager, Henry Delgado, mm -hmm. and they have to have learned something. So that's gonna be a test. That's gonna be a test on uh, when you actually get to the championship level, because we're talking championship level now. Yes, we are. Okay, we're not talking anything lower than championship level. This is the top step. So now we know Mike's there. Is the coaching staff there? Well, you know, you saw that for the last probably, it, it was, actual time is probably two minutes, but it seemed like two hours when we were going on there. Um, I, I couldn't say anything because I agree. I have nothing but the utmost respect for Robert Garcia. Um, um, you know, going from uh, and taking over Antonio Margarito and um, uh, just everything that he's done, you know, with all the fighters that he well, has. Donito Donaire. Donito Donaire. Uh, little Mickey. I mean, he's, yeah, there's, there's no question that he knows what he's doing. I like his style. I like the, like the way that, you know, the fighters, he's obviously a radio been able to get each one of his fighters to buy in to what he wants them to do. And, you know, there's no uh, better better remedy for success than, you know, than victory. And so when he, he tells the guys, you listen to me and, and we're going to win, and they see that happen, they follow that. But let me go back. Let me tell you something, just, just, a, just a note. Keep that keep that thought. Uh, talking about Roberto Garcia, do you know that before he retired, his last few fights, he was a grandpa. Really? Oh yeah, he was a grandpa. He was a grandpa in his last few fights before he retired. So that's saying a lot as him as a fighter, and now he's come into a coach. Uh, you've got to take your hats off your hat off to to, to a man like this and. Uh, had nothing to do with this fight or anything else. This is about Roberto Garcia, the fighter. Roberto Garcia, the trainer. He's he's uh, he's a man that's up there with the um, with the best in the world. Yeah, there's I, I don't think that there's any dispute about that at all. I'm just going to take the uh, um, the position that Mike Alvarado has been in at 140 pounds with um, tough competition. Um, he's come through it. Okay, with all, and that's with all the naysayers who said that, you know, uh, um, that he hadn't fought anyone. Well, the last three fights he's had, uh, um, I don't think anyone would dispute that, that he has fought people. Now, you can't, you can't have to take that away from him. And I think, like I said earlier, I think he realizes that, you know, in time, his time is now. Brandon Rios attempting to come up in weight. I think he might have bit off just a little bit more than he can chew. But let me say this. I'm going to tell you, like you said earlier, I agree. There's no quit in either fighter, but I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going along with what Mike Alvarado said in an interview he had about a week ago where he said, this fight is not going the distance. And I'm, I believe I read that. that. Because I read you know that. what, Aurelio, I you have been the biggest proponent of when we've had two Mexican fighters, Mexican-Americans, Mexicans, whatever, as long as you have Mexican in there, you say that these are going to be wars, okay, just for pride. And uh, I think these two guys are two of the proudest fighters that you'll ever see. And these guys, like you said, the most attractive thing about this radio is that, man, we get to see this on HBO. No pay-per-view. You we don't know. have to try to budget anything. We got guys that, you know, uh, this is a fight that <laughs> you can go across the street to your neighbors, and you don't have to wait and say, well, I got to give Jim $10. That's on right. That's you can right. go walk across the street with a bowl, bowl of popcorn, and it's on. That's right. And these guys are going to go. Let me tell you what I really really like about this. I've been in boxing for a long time, and you have. I mean, I boxed 10 years, and then 
uh, uh, turn trainer, turn promoter, and do little club fights. But you know what I really love about this fight? What I really, really love about this fight when when you talk about Mexican fighters and tough fights and the fighters fighting for pride. Okay, the first thing that comes to your mind is Mexican fighters, Mexican nationals. Yes. Okay. These two guys are Chicanos. <laughs> These are pride. This is this is American, a Mexican American pride, baby. Yes. This is this is this is uh, they they've always been kind of sidestep from our counterparts, the Mexican nationals from Mexico. Yeah. You know, they were always the warriors coming in to fight and stuff like it, and. The Mexican American, the Chicanos, uh, full of pride. I mean, their hearts are this big. I'm telling you, man. There's, there's, that's the beauty of this fight is because here you got two Mexican American uh, um, warriors that at, at the Home run. Depot Center in Carson, California, where right there the Mexican American <laughs> community is going to come out in droves to support. Um, well, we know they're going to maybe come out to support Brandon Rios, but I got a feeling. I got a feeling there's going to be a few of us from Denver that are going to be in that crowd. They're going to be supporting uh, uh, my boy Mike Alvarado. Now, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to put you on the hot seat. If you, if you and I travel here together, are you going to wear your Brandon Rio shirt or are you going to wear your Mike Alvarado shirt? Because I'll tell you right now, folks, if you see him at the fight, he's got a Brandon Rio shirt, you'll see him <laughs> on one end of the arena and you'll see me on the other. I'm supporting my boy Mike Alvarado. Hey, hey I'm going to tell you what. I'm proud of Mike. Mike is a very good person. I hear a I'm butt excited. coming on. No, no, he ain't no butts. I'm proud of him. As a matter of fact, uh, I don't think, I don't know if people realize this, but uh, uh, I go back a long way in, in the Mike, Mike uh, family mm -hmm. uh, lines. As a matter of fact, his biological father, Robbie Cisneros. Uh, I trained him. Mm -hmm. And Mike used to come to the gym when he was, you know, five, six years old. Uh, and I'm sure he probably doesn't remember. That's a long time. That I don't remember when I was that young. But he used to be at the gym all the time. Mm -hmm. So Mike was Mike is a, is a natural athlete. Yes, you know? He's, he, he was born with that in his blood. He was in the gym when he was very small. Uh, well, a lot of people school, don't, he don't through, remember. Really, I'm not to interrupt, but I will interrupt. A lot of people don't remember that that uh, Mike was a high school champion, state champion wrestler. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and if you look at wrestling. You take the two the two sports where the training is so demanding on the athlete. It's yes. boxing and wrestling. Yes. I mean, it's one on one. There's no no way you can raise your hand and say, "Time out, I need a breather." Send in send in the next guy. When you're in that ring. You're in that ring. Okay. So so it's it's demanding the workouts. Uh, and you're right. I know both fighters. Yes. Okay. I I I, uh, I know both fighters. I'm familiar with both fighters. Uh, Mike Alvarado's homegrown. I'm gonna tell you the truth. I can't pick this fight. As you much are. as as much as I would like to pick this fight and analyze this fight as 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 who's gonna win and maybe as we get closer to the fight, I may be able may be able to, may be able to find something that will lead me one way or another. But as it is as it is right now, I can't tell you who's gonna win this fight. Well, folks, let me tell you this. You know, this is one thing about inside boxing throwdown. We don't allow a radio to ride the fence like that. In, in one of our future segments, we're going to, I imagine in a word, we're going to flip a coin. Because this fight is that good, where we can flip a coin, and, and this is going to be an out-and-out -out debate, where we're going to flip a coin, a radio will have one box, and I'll have, we, I'll have the other. But like I said earlier, I think in this case, you'll be able to see. Everyone knows I'm Mike Alvarado's fan. I think Mike is going to win this fight. On the, form, on the coin flip, if I happen to lose and I get Brandon Rios, I'm going to give you a hell of a case for Brandon Rios to win. And I think you can do that either way. I believe that. I think you can do, really that's the beauty of this fight. You can, you can make a case for each, any fighter. And I think anyone out there, if they sit there and tell you, they can guarantee you that one is going to win the fight and the other is not going to win the fight. But they're crazy. You can't. Well, I, see they're crazy. I mean, we know who we want to win the fight. Okay, Brandon Rios has Brandon Rios fans. Mike Alvarado has Mike Alvarado fans. Now, Mike is serious about this. As a matter of fact, Very you can talk about his past. And, you know, we all know that he, uh, he, he's he been in trouble in the past. Uh, but like uh, you said, that's the past. That's in the past. Well, I don't, I don't to tell you about anymore. this fight, tell you about this fight, this entire training camp has been in California. Yes. In its entirety. So, 
you can't get any serious, any more serious than that, where you're just focusing on one thing, and that's this upcoming fight. Yes, I have so, actually haven't been able to talk to Mike, um, you know, as normally I would, but I have spoken to his manager Henry Delgado, as you know, a couple of times on radio, and Henry. They're serious, like you said. They're serious yeah. about this, and like you said, they're in California, and and they're basically in in isolation. Get 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 away from Denver. Get away from any distraction. That's how serious they have to take it. And to be honest, I I, I don't think you could approach it any other way. I, I don't think so. Well, go ahead and let let, let the fellas know. But uh, uh, again, where the fight's at. Uh, okay. Well, again, once again, we got Saturday, October thirteenth, at the Home Depot Center in Carson, California where the fight time starts on HBO after dark. It's going to be 10 p.m. Eastern time. That'll be 8 p.m. Mountain Standard time for all you Colorado and mountain folks. And don't forget, tickets on that are, have gone on sale. They're on sale. And remarkably, Steve? Uh, oh, more than reasonably priced, <clears throat> priced at $175, $75, and $35. So this pay, the, the house should be packed. That's right. Grab your pencils. Uh, if you if you want to call about tickets, here's here's where you can go. Okay, you can call tick for ticket, either buy tickets or ticket information. You can call 888-929-7849. That number again, 888-929-7849. Okay, and uh, give them a call. Like we said, tickets are reasonably priced at thirty five seventy five and one fifty. Uh, this is just a treat for boxing fans. This whole really event is. is a treat for boxing fans. It doesn't even matter who they put on the end of the card. Well, I guarantee you this, and <clears> I think we're in total agreement on this. You're going to get to see Mike Alvarado and Brandon Rios, and when that fight is over, most of you will be ready to go home. But then you've got to, you've <laughs> got to stick around for what is a fight that's going to be just as good when you have uh, uh, the Nonito Donaire Taking on uh, oh, uh, man. Uh, 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 Nishioka. I you mean, know. That, and that's, that, that, oh man, I'm telling you, it is, like we said earlier, not to beat that dead horse, but just a fantastic fight card that under normal circumstances, you wouldn't mind that being a pay per view. I hate to say that because I, I despise well, yeah, 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 but, um, but under normal conditions, this would be a fight where you'd say, I won't mind shelling out that $44.95. Let me, let me tell you, let me ask you, uh, uh, these fights, you, are you in agreement they're not going to go the distance, or do you think they have a chance to go the distance? Before we leave them, let's at least leave them with uh, our thoughts on uh, how the fight uh, will go out. Will, will it go the distance? Will it end? Well, Toshiaki Nishioka versus versus uh, uh, Nuno Nair. <clears throat> I think that fight will go the distance. So do I. I think we're that fight will go the We're in agreement. I think the fight with Brandon Rios and Mike Alvarado, I'm going with Mike, I agree. That's not going the distance. There's there's too much Mexican-American Chicano pride on this, and these guys are both knockout guys, and somebody's going. And I think it's going to go the distance. Do you really? I think it's going to go the distance. If it, I will say this. If it ends early, I mean, if it ends and does not go the distance, it's going to end early because both of these guys are power hitters. They're just going to come out and bang. And I think they're going to bang, and I think the fight will end before five. Okay, stop right there. Okay. Stop right there because if that's the case, who do you say comes out on top on that? Because you got there's got to be a favor. Wait a minute. No, no, no. If you say if it goes early, I think the scales are heavily tilted in the favor of Mike Alvarado. Well, well here's, here's what I'm saying. My opinion, I think Mike's the heavier hitter. I think because of the weight. He's well, just just I think he's the heavier hitter. Okay. I think I think he is the heavier hitter. Okay. Okay. I think he's the heavier hitter. Do so you think Robert Garcia is smarter than that? But I also think that Brandon Rios, as far as defensively, is the better fighter. Defensive Ooh. skills. So the key is, will Mike deliver? A powerful ball blow. He's going to throw him. We know that. But will he deliver? Because it's going to take one of them hits on the button yeah, to, to take put to take reels down. Okay. Right, right. And if it doesn't happen, Brandon is enough of a heavy hitter because he's also a heavy hitter to retaliate. And we do know Mike gets hit. 
Okay, think about that. Yeah, well, okay, wait, so, well wait a minute. So, when you say my gift is, I would say this. Let, let, the fight, I'll go back to the Breeze Prescott fight. That was him fighting a boxer puncher. Okay, I think that myself. The Breeze Prescott is classic <laughs> boxer puncher. No, he ain't. Yes, he is. No, he ain't. Yes, he is. No, no, no. He's your Breeze classic. is your Ricardo Mayor can come in and I'm going to Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, Ricardo that's, that's Ricardo that's, Mayor. No, 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 I'm not going to let you get away with that. <laughs> Ricardo Mayor, we all know, has zero skills. <laughs> Regis Prescott, that jab that he uh, that he showcased that he had against Mike Alvarado was a thing of beauty. I think anybody would see say that other than you. That's that my was point. Like, but that's saying, my point. But wait a minute. Mike is there. Mike gets hit. Gets hit. Mike well, gets against hit. Herrera. Uh, Mauricio Herrera is another guy where you'd say he's a guy that, you know, he's a big hitter. Okay? He and Mike had some tremendous exchanges. But that's what I'm saying. Mike, Mike's got... One of the best chins in the business. And that's what I'm telling you. He's got a, one of the best chins in the, in the business against guys that right now could potentially fight at welterweight. Right now. So what do you think about a guy that's coming from lightweight coming up against him? I'm just, I just, I, I, that's what I'm, I'm saying. I'm just hoping for okay. you fans' sake okay. that when we flip the coin that I get Brandon Rios. Because if I get Mike Alvarado <laughs> on the foreign coin flip, a radio doesn't have a prayer. Okay. <laughs> Come on now. But let me tell you. Okay, so... Me, going back to me. Go back to you. I think it's going to go the distance. I see this fight going the distance. If it does end in a stoppage, it's going to be before the fifth round, Ooh. which I don't think is going to happen. So, on record, I think it's going to go the distance. Well, I'll you tell know? you what. Um, no, I, I, I don't think it's going the distance. And I think it's going to be stopped somewhere around the 8th, 7th, 8th.